what I'm going to do now is turn off my guitars and my bass. I'm going to put a little bit of click in here too. I'm just balancing the click in to where it's really just barely audible and blending in when the drums are really pocketed really well to it. At that volume, it'll just make an appearance. It'll just kind of be a little bit of a clue of where things are maybe not as tight as they should be. My goal is not to put the drums like strictly on the grid. There's a few moments where there's maybe a snare hit that's a little early or a little late, just kind of a few bars here and there that push in sections. As we see, I'm just going to be kind of doing some general tightening in, in an overall way, and then there will be specific moments along the arrangement of the song where I will probably do stuff that's a, a bit tighter. So first thing to do, is I'll make a duplicate playlist. Every time anything is done, any sort of change, I'll just sort of document in a playlist. So once we do this, the, I'll make a new playlist and put the fades in, and then I'll make a new playlist and consolidate the files just so that for any reason, if we want to go back and look at what the work was, there's a very clear path of the progress. First fill feels pretty good. It is pushing a little bit. This one feels like it's pushing more. I'm just gonna slip this back a little bit. But leave that last hit as it was. the same here. Occasionally I'll use something like Beat Detective, not so much for the time correction, but for like cutting stuff up. This isn't as intense of a job, so I, I just kind of do it by ear. And then another thing that I actually do that when I start, just because I have a performance that's a whole take, I'll just go through on the grid and block out at a minimum, I would just sort of block out each section. So because of the way that I go through and move things, I don't want to be moving the whole file because I start at the beginning to kind of work down the timeline chronologically. Kind of put some cuts in here. It doesn't have to be anything too specific. Definitely want to do it at where sections change. Find that it's pushing at the top of the section of the beginning of the song. That feels like very natural energy. It settles in very quickly, at least on this first snare hit. This kick drum, a little behind. So I'm just going to move it a little bit. I'm selecting it with a little bit of a little bit of space in front of it, and then I'll just snap it to the grid. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this super, like every note super on the grid. I'm using the, the grid as a visual reference, trying to use my ear as the most determinate factor. And then all the in-between stuff, the hi-hats, the, the smaller in-between syncopated rhythms, I generally try to leave those alone and leave those connected to the other parts of the performance. Do a little bit of listening before I dive into this and just sort of make an assessment. Well, at least for the verse, it feels like the second half settles in a little bit more in terms of being not as ahead as the first part. Just kind of just sort of look at it a little more closely. Yeah, we can see where it's not pushing quite as much. The way I've cut it, I've left a little bit of the snare where I've made this cut ahead of the grid so that when I 
quantize it, it's still pushing the feel a little bit, which feels good and natural. I'm not looking for it to be exactly on the grid, and I'm just gonna kind of listen from there and see what further adjustments. To separate, I'm using Command E, and then Command Zero is what quantizes it to the grid. The quantization is to the grid selection I have. If I was cut in between where my grid is, and I had a much larger scale, it would throw it way off. The grid resolution value needs to be similar to where I'm quantizing to. Um, otherwise, it will throw things out. Let's see, let's undo that, and let's put our grid back in eighths. But back to listening. Let's just talk about the in-between stuff, the, the hi-hats here. They're moving around the grid a little bit, but that's the feel of the performance. I don't, I'm not trying to make this robotic. I have a cut here. Depending on how I've shifted things, for this current edit, I'm letting these hi-hats be in time and performance connected to the end of this section where this snare drum is. I might, depending on how things are, are lining up, I might pull it over this way. It just depends on what feels natural. Let's just see if one is better than the other. Actually, what feels better to me is this. It's just a slight change, but it doesn't make this kick drum feel as pushed because the hi-hats that are associated with this region were just slightly behind. And so when the kick drum came, it just made the kick drum feel pushed. And it's not that the kick drum isn't in a spot that I want it. It's just the stuff that comes before it is just telling, you know, just telling our minds and our time, our internal timekeeper, the relationship is not good. And it's not necessarily the, simply the fault of this kick drum, it's what's preceded it. Oftentimes when you're editing things, you have to take into account the other information around it. And this kick drum is the middle of the verse. And so it is pushed a little bit, which feels natural because I know from listening to the song that that's also where the chord progression repeats. And so that's going to be a natural feeling of a performance of sort of starting the, the progression over, that that push feels natural. <music> trying to just listen to this and maintain the musicality of it. I'm trying to do a big, a big job, a bigger gesture, and if I don't get every minor detail of it right at this moment, as we add instrumentation and the vocals are there, if there's something that I want to fine tune later and, and tighten up a little bit more or, or just shift in a certain way, um, I'm sort of deferring that um, decision making until later. I'm not just simply looking at this as how tight the drums are to the click track or the programming. It's about maintaining the musicality of the performance. I'm sort of preemptively making sure that my, my transitional places between my regions are already preset in places where when I do a, like a batch crossfade, that they're just gonna drop in nicely um, and I don't have to review stuff. But I do need to be paying attention to little things like this where the hi-hat is leading and I don't want a double hit there. I'm trying to pay attention along the way. I'll check my work at the end. And of course, I will listen to all the transitions. often as I can, I like to move in multiples, I guess. The bigger offender here to my ear is the kick drum. The snare drum kind of went by okay, but I'm sort of also observing that it's, it's a little bit farther ahead than what I've been using as my sort of window of 
feels good and looks good. Just in the trying to keep the human element of the performance, I'm moving those two things together. The time in between, that's where the feel is. So I'm trying to maintain as much of it as possible. Since I have sort of moved that back, also kind of observing and just want to just check out where these hi-hats are falling right down here. 